There's like a little chapel perched up on the top of it. The architecture also has this defensive quality. There were periods where they used that as a motif, but they didn't actually serve a defensive purpose. I don't know about you, Ben, but I do have this attachment to things being of a certain historical period and all making sense. And it doesn't need to. I mean, where's Elden Ring? It could be an alternate universe. My name is Benjamin Ball. I'm the founder of Ball Nogues Studio in Los Angeles. I have a studio which produces public art, architectural environments, and we also do our own fabrication, so we build things. I'm Alexis Redinger, and I founded Preen Inc. We're an architecture and hospitality design firm specializing in restaurants and hotels. Today, we're going to be checking out a game called Elden Ring. This is what happens when reclaimed wood is overused. <laughs> yeah, the whole city goes up in flames. It's, no, it's <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen sort of a long shingle like that. Have you been? I don't think I have. It's, it's unclear whether it's a shingle or whether it's a plank of wood. It's kind of in between. I don't know that a horse would, it would support a horse and a rider. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Plausibility isn't the first thing that game designers seem to think about. But this is a more plausible world than Minecraft in a way. I mean, well, it looks, it's more realistic. Oh, for sure. I mean, someone has spent a lot of time studying traditional architectural details and then adapted it too. There was like a column just to step back. They kind of almost look like a more lamppost from turn of the century, right there on the left. On the left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> castle architecture, which is, I can't tell which period, because there's this sort of Edwardian aspect applied to it as well. My knowledge of medieval architecture gets pretty murky. One thing you see in a lot of these procession. Yeah. The character moves a kind of wide, long shot of structure, and then they approach a gate, and then they, approach, they move into a vestibule, and then they move into a hall. Look at the, the turret detail and articulation. It's almost like the tracery, the ornament that you see on windows. Fantastical, but beautiful. Is that laundry? <laughs> I don't think that was laundry hanging. <laughs> As opposed to the, the, the one now is much more medieval, functional. There's a lot of defensive fortress architecture in contrast to the processional architecture that would have traditionally been used to elevate the status of the church. That looks like a much more modern pillar, don't you think, Ben? It's an ionic order. It doesn't have the intricate detail of the other classical orders. Oh. Pretty steep grade. <laughs> yeah. It's probably something you wouldn't have seen in a medieval building. Yeah, not it, not that wide. If you were to see that steeper grade, it might be under a castle, but it'd be like a little tunnel. Yeah. This is weird because it's there's Renaissance detailing, like a kind of classical revival. It's also this kind of medieval catacomb. There's a thousand years of history mashed up into this space. The color is awesome. The detailing is not a medieval night era. It's much later. Several of these remind me of San Simeon, the gigantic fireplaces. Almost several of the spaces that we've been in have had hearths, fireplaces. You know, they kind of orient you when you're in the game, I suppose. Yeah. Sort of gone with the wind a little bit, too. <laughs> This isn't a, just a decayed space. This looks like a space that's more maintained, I guess. And I don't think you would actually, so it's a barrel vault, the whole room. Yeah. But then they've coffered. Yeah. Um, which one wouldn't have traditionally done that at all. Cause it's the idea of like a stone coffer, but then a stone circular barrel arch. They could have got the idea from DC subway. <laughs> I love that barrel vaults that have these coffers. I mean, game designers are just borrowing. Well, I think the, the DC Metro had the advantage of having concrete. Right. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. Again, this is Citizen Kane, again. They really use a lot of the, the stuff from there. 
I don't know about you, Ben, but I do have this attachment to things being of a certain historical period and all making sense. And it doesn't need to. I mean, where's Elden Ring? It could be an alternate universe. <laughs> yeah. So there is no time. There is no time. Yeah, that's what I learned as a set designer. It doesn't really... Unless the, the story needs to be firmly grounded in a particular period, you can borrow freely to create dramatic effect. Yes, and yet at the same time, all those little devices like feeling the grit or the rug really looking like the rug are the things that ground it and give the whole experience authenticity. So it's kind of interesting what needs to show up as more photo real and then what doesn't need to. It's huge. Yeah, I mean, that's a mashup of different castles and different architectural typologies. Manor is a good word. Yeah. It's not exactly a castle, right? Yeah. Sort of like a merchant manor. <laughs> oh, back in the day in Europe, they used to um, used to pay taxes based on how many windows you had in your house. Right, right, right. That person would have been uh, highly taxed. <laughs> highly taxed. There's like a little chapel perched up on the top of it. The architecture also has this defensive quality. There were periods where they used that as a motif, but they didn't actually serve a defensive purpose. This building looks like it would be vulnerable to attack, although that's pretty steep. Defensive architecture now, it's a get off of my lawn house. <laughs> More decay. Well, this looks like there's there's a lava flow running through the... It's beautiful paving. I've never seen paving like that. Lava is molten rock, so if lava is touching rock, it's melting it. Or it's cooling on it. It's cooling on it. Was that a some kind of mechanical device? That, like some kind of big turbine? Look at that. Yeah. I mean, this is another historical thing too, right? Like it wouldn't be metal at that time. It'd be a stone wheel. Nobody would be articulating or moving a, a bridge that's built in stone. But I mean, if you had a lava waterfall, <laughs> almost like somebody had a late night party. So like, they left all the candles on the ground near the huddle puddle. And I like how it's more golden tone. Yeah. No decay, but they still have a weed problem. But again, there's no people inhabiting these cities who are alone. Somebody lurking around the corners, but for the most part, the whole culture of the place has been wiped out. Look at that detail on that. Mm. It's almost like a huge colonnade, kind of basically an arch. Cathedrals often have huge doors that were, you know, scaled much larger than any person would have experienced at that at the time that they were built. It was you, know, you were walking into the house of God. It was scaled to impress. That's historically accurate. I think that what they've done here is just exaggerated. There's definitely some like Italian Renaissance detail, but then like some sort of English manner. You know, it's it's interesting to see that most of these the games that we've seen thus far are set in a Western European world. But we haven't yet seen Thailand or Aztec universe. Oh, wow. That's one of the ways they got our architectural articulation back in the day. They killed the dragon and then it just sort of froze. <laughs> That's like the interior of the pantheon that's totally the pantheon which would have been a a roman pagan temple that appropriated by the catholic church never seen anything like it <laughs> yeah never seen anything like it i like how it's staggered oh this looks like an 80s album cover totally. and i can't remember which one <laughs> Well, a lot of video games look like Molly Hatchet, Southern Rock Band from that time. It's funny because that's a ruin, right? Like, that's like a, either a Greek or a Roman, a Syrian ruin, ruin, right? A lot of architects in the Renaissance, that was all they had to learn from. People built in these classical periods, this kind of idealized path. And so there's a lot of documentation of ruins that was done during the Renaissance 
by architects who traveled to visit ruins as a, a way of gathering knowledge. I don't think it's too random. I think it's about telling a story. I mean, if it was architecture, I mean, you're not looking at architecture, you're looking at a setting for a story. You're in one kind of kingdom and then you're in another kind of a kingdom. And so to use different architectural styles are used almost like characters in a, in a story. Is it random? No, it's not random. It's very thought out by the game designers. If it was an actual building, there'd be some people that were pleased, but there'd also be a lot of people that were not happy with it. It's a little <laughs> loose. <laughs> right. If that was done <laughs> in real life, there would be some outcry. In a way, it's like every project we touch, there's an ethos to it that has to do with the business, with the brand. And so that narrative that gets created in the way we design that project. It's the same, same with video game too. So it's a whole realm. For more experts react, subscribe to Gameology. For more Gameology videos, head over to Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> Background. I always have problems describing what I do and characterizing it for people who don't, because I do a lot of different things, so. Sometimes the brain stops connecting to the mouth. <laughs> 